Hello friends, welcome back to Compiler Hacking. In this video, I wanna work on our interpreter, uh, our virtual machine. And uh, it's something that I started back in December, late December, uh, with a live stream. And thank you to all of you who stopped by to cheer me on and chat. And that was, that was a lot of fun. I'm really glad that we did that. Uh, but at the end of that stream, I realized that there are some shortcomings and architectural um, things in our compiler, in our Natalie compiler, that did not make this as easy as I had hoped and uh, got me thinking. And so one thing I've been working on ta -da, is a brand new compiler. Um, this one is going to uh, be much better, I think. Uh, it's optional right now. You have to turn it on with a flag, um, but it uses a real internal representation uh, and supports multiple backends. So rather than assuming from the very beginning that we're, we're generating C++, it has an intermediate step, and that is to generate these instructions. So if you watched that stream, you know that we worked on a stack-based virtual machine, and uh, these instructions will look s sort of familiar to you. These are, th these. this is our internal representation. So uh, this new compiler, will generate instructions like these, assuming that they're going to run on this uh, virtual machine. And then uh, what the C++ backend does is converts these instructions into C++. But what we're gonna work on in this video is just interpreting them directly uh, and uh, making a new backend. So we'll have a C++ backend, and uh, at the end of this video, we'll have an interpreter backend. So stick around if you wanna watch that happen. Uh, I'm pretty excited about the new compiler, and I want to see if the interpreter can uh, be pretty straightforward given that we already have these instructions lined out. Uh, the C++ backend works, so I just wanna make sure that the interpreter backend can work, and then I feel I will feel good enough to merge this PR. So yeah, let's jump right in and see what we can do. Um, where to start? So this was the last commit, start work on new compiler. It was quite long. I added, added quite a few files here, and it's all in the compiler2 uh, directory. And we'll start with, um, I'll start with Ben Natalie. Let's uh, open that file there. And um, interpret, I think I commented this out, so put back, yeah, so we're going to uncomment this. And I think, hmm, interpret Ruby code instead of compiling. So I believe uh, we want this to assumes dash C2. Uh, we'll do enables, enable C2. So we're gonna put this up here and then we're going to do this. So if you put dash I, then you are requesting the new compiler uh, because the interpreter can't run instructions from the uh, old existing compiler. So we're gonna set both of these flags and then uh, down here we use this, we do Natalie VM new, Natalie RB. And I guess we want to load a new file and we're gonna go create it in the Natalie directory, vm.rb module Natalie class vm. Uh, def initialize instructions. Instructions is, uh, I have a thing called an instruction manager, which, um, which uh, just, sort of wraps an array of instructions and keeps track of the uh, instruction pointer. So we're gonna do instruction manager new instructions and uh, we'll have a run method. So let's see what happens there. Natalie interpret P1. Uninitialized constant instruction manager because it is in compiler two fix that okay well uh, good no no errors because we are here I think make sure we're actually getting there yeah uh, so we want to do something um, one thing I n remembered from instruction manager is I called this each but um, I think I want to call this walk because it kind of 
uh, signals that something more is happening. So let's just go over to compiler to transform where we were using that. Uh, change that. Oops. Okay. I'll feel better about that. Uh, just communicates a little bit more of this is something more than just iterating over an array. Uh, we're actually um, interpreting uh, or actually incrementing the instruction pointer. So I think that'll be nice. And then I'm going to need this to be an accessor later, I know. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Uh, make sure I didn't break anything here. Without the I, this is the old compiler. That's fine. With the new compiler, it still works. Just making sure. Okay, so we're doing pretty good. Now we'll go back to the, the VM. And I think we want to do um, at instructions walk do instruction, like so. And then we want to execute it. Um, execute, we'll have each instruction class responsible for executing itself. And we'll pass in the VM. And uh, we'll go from there. So open this. Uh, we'll do it over here. Um, actually, let's just run it and see what fails first. I can show you the um, the internal representation of this print one. Uh, it's pretty simple. We print, we push an int one, then we push an arg count of one, then we push self, then we push or we uh, send the p message to self with this one argument, and then we pop the result because it's not used for anything. And so these are the instructions we're going to need to interpret uh, with our VM in order for this code to run. And I uh, just want to do dash i here. Yeah, let's see what the first error is. Undefined method execute for a string. Fascinating. That is not what I expected. What? What is that? Instructions walk. Weird. Instructions? Okay, let's what are these instructions? What do they look like? They look like C. Um that's not oh, 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 I know what it is. Uh, I know what the problem is. In uh let's see, compiler to RB uh, down here, we need to skip. The, we need to do nothing on the back end here because we do actually don't want, hmm, yeah. This actually isn't, the VM isn't actually a back end, is it? Because it's not generating anything new. So I guess we just want to do return instructions if options interpret. Does that do something better? Undefined method execute for push int. That is what I would expect. So definitely important to skip our CPP backend. Um, by the way, these little E's over here are telling me that there's errors here, but uh, it, it's wrong. There's something wrong with my editor, and, I, and I'm just not going to look into it right now. But if I do LSP uh, restart, then it usually goes away. So I've just been ignoring them for the last two days, and I. <laughs> I'll get around to, to fixing that in my editor soon. Uh, but we want to go to the push int instruction. And um, let's move this over to the left. And then we want to make an execute, execute VM. And what we want to do is uh, push onto the stack the int that we're storing in this instruction. Um, and that means we need in our VM, we need a push and we need a stack. So we're just going to use an array for the stack. We're going to have a push value. Um, we're going to say stack.push value. So we're just going to delegate that method. And uh, while we're here, we might as well write a pop. And we'll say um, raise out of stack if the stack is empty because i want a good error message i don't want this accidentally returning nil um ruby's gonna always return nil if i do something like stack.pop and there's nothing on it 
I think, is that right? If I say this.pop, I get nil, yeah. So I want to get a better error. Um, always raise errors as soon as possible so that uh, so you can see exactly where the error is coming from. You don't want to nil propagating all around the place and not know where it came from. Uh, so that's push and pop. And then over here, we're pushing the int. So let's just see what the next um, error is. We're going to have push int instruction undefined method execute. Did I not save that? Um, push int instruction, push int instruction, execute. Cool. I mean, I'm right here, push int instruction execute i'm calling the right one um what's going on let's just exit this is it my oh right oh file exists well of course the file exists weird Okay, push arg count instruction now is the one we're working on. That was odd. Okay, push arg count instruction. So similar here, execute vm vm.push and push the count. Next error, just gonna keep going. And it's doing that thing again. Oh, weird. Okay, let's just quit, open. Right. Push self instruction. Push self. This one is going to require a little bit more work because what I want to do is execute vm um, vm dot push vm dot self. So we need to keep track of the self object somewhere, and we're just going to do it here. Self is um, self is let's create a new main object dot new and we'll do require relative vm main object and we'll go create that file right here X, do, 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 compiler no vm vm create it that is not what i meant to do that's uh, D VM. There we go. Create a VM directory, and then inside of here, I'm gonna do main object dot rb uh, module. Let's just copy that. Copy that right there. Class main object. End end end. Um, the reason I want a new object here is well, one reason is because when you're in IRB and you do self, you get, um, you know, self.inspect returns main like this. So I want it to be a special object that can do that. Uh, huh, self object main, do, 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 adder accessor. That should work. I'm gonna save this. So we added the execute. It's not giving me that error, that's good. Okay, send instruction needs an execute. So let's copy this send instruction RB. Let's close that. So this one, um, it's gonna look a little bit like this. So we're gonna receive, the receiver is gonna be popped off the stack. The arg count is gonna be popped off. We're gonna collect the arguments. Um, however many arg count there is, however many arguments there are, we're going to pop that many times. Um, we don't need this any. We're going to say receiver.send. Um, we're going to send the message that we're storing on the instruction itself. Um, and then we're going to pass the arc. It's very simple in Ruby to send a message to uh, to an object and then pass in the arguments. You just do it like that. Uh, pretty cool. Did I get it right? Undefined method execute for pop instruction. Okay, fair enough. Pop instruction. Let's just do this. Vm.pop. 
this will work? Does it print a one? It didn't print a one, yes, but we're now out of stack. Uh, because I didn't push the result of this. So I need to push the result of that send. Then we'll have something on the stack to pop. And it worked. Cool. Cool, cool, cool. Uh, now let's do something a little bit more advanced. So let's say we want to create a method called double. And it takes a variable and it returns... Um, um, x plus x? We'll make it, I don't know, just for fun, let's do square. x times x, end, and then we want to call square and print it square of 9. And uh, we'll, we'll get to implement a few more uh, instructions, uh, this one for define method instruction. So go over here. Define method instruction. This one's going to be a little more fun. That's why I wanted to do it on the video uh, So you can kind of see one way to do this um, We're going to need something better for our stack for this uh, Actually, we're gonna need a call stack. We're gonna need a new stack because we're gonna need to keep track of our calls So we're not going to use the Ruby call stack. We're going to keep track of it inside of our VM uh, so you know, there's different ways of making this work, but um, this is the way that I have found that I think think is good. So we're going to copy this down here and we'll do push um, call or call frame or frame. I don't know, I'll do call. I think that makes sense uh, and pop call. And so we need to, excuse me one sec. Okay, we need to Okay, we need to keep track of the return IP and the arguments I think uh, and then let's just pop push those onto the call stack Before I forget I'm going to do this out of call stack. Okay pop call push call um, Why is that not green? weird there we go. Uh, we're going to push return IP, return IP, and args, args. So that will just that will just push a hash onto this uh, array. Uh, you don't need the curly braces in Ruby, so I'm just going to leave those off. Um, that feels right, and then. Um, I need to I need to think through how to do this. Uh, first off, we we want to define the method on self. So the self we were keeping track of, we want to call define method with the name, and it accepts some args. And so we are going to use uh, Ruby, the host Ruby language to to keep track of the methods. We're not going to put those somewhere else. But inside of here, we want to execute the VM. And so what we need to do is um, move the instruction pointer into the code. So uh, let's let's go look at this code. So this produced a little bit uh, more, <laughs> produced a few more instructions. And so from here, define method down to end, that is our method that we need to keep track of. So it really starts at one and it ends at seven. That's where it will uh, stop execution. So we need to think about how we can uh, store the starting point and then have the VM run this code whenever that method is called. And so I guess we want to start IP is the current IP because at the point that this was executed, the IP is already one, I think, hopefully. Uh, and then we want to do VM push call. And the re so when the method is called, we want to store the return IP as the current IP of the VM. 
and the arguments are the arguments that were passed into this Ruby method, the host Ruby. <laughs> uh, and then um, we, at the end of the method, when it's done running, we want to change the IP back to the return IP from the call stack. So it'd be VM pop call return IP. I hope I got that right. That seems, seems right. Um, oh, and this is VM IP is start IP. So we need to jump to that IP. Okay, that's right. So we're pushing the call we're jumping the instruction pointer to where the method starts, which is going to be uh, here. And then when we get down to the end, we're going to um, change the IP back to where it was called, which presumably would be 13, because we did send square here, it jumps up to here, it's gonna execute these instructions, it's gonna get down to seven, and then it's going to be finished and it's going to return back to 13. So I hope hope that makes some sense. I hope I got it right. Uh, and then we're going to call VM run. And um, there's no doubt I have missed some things. Uh, but let's just see what our errors are because I feel like we're getting close. Undefined method IP for VM. So I didn't expose the IP because that's a part of the instruction manager. So we'll do instructions.ip and then I also need a setter for it. So we'll do this. Okay, does it, does that get us a little bit farther? Undefined method, define method for main object. Um, that's that's a little bit interesting because here I can do define method foo print foo. Yeah, I can totally do that. Can I do object define method? Foo. Or let's do bar. I can object dot bar. What if I do object dot new and I do o dot define method as? Okay, so that's the error I'm getting because the main object, which is self, it must delegate that somehow. So let's, let's just assume that's what it's doing. So we'll do define method name and block. Let's move this over here so you can see it. Um, block. And we'll do self class define method name block. Okay, does that get us a little bit farther? Undefined method execute for push arg instruction. Uh, that's a good sign. That means we got inside of the method instruction set, which that means we got to number one. That's fantastic. We need to go add and execute for push arg instruction. We'll do it right here in vm.push, vm.currentargs index. So we need to implement um, that current args. The current args is always going to be for the last item on the call stack. So we'll do def current args. Uh, I want to do this at call stack dot last args. Does that make sense? I think that's right. Out of call stack current args VM forty nine. Okay. Um, current args. So that kind of tells me that I did something wrong over here. Push call args. When I did push call, I did it on the right thing. Let's just look at the call stack right here. VM um, instance variable get. Actually, let's do it. Let's do it over here. Push call. 
p p call stack does that look like what we would expect no vmrb line 50 what's calling that push arg instruction 21 oh i think i know what's happening so the mistake i made was um we we go here and we define the method but then we immediately jump inside of it we want to skip over it and we want to jump down to here so we want to execute instruction zero and then we want to execute instruction eight so um yeah uh i have i have some code for that in the cpp backend transform rb I uh, have a way to do that. Fetch block of instructions. So let's copy that over to the VM. And let's just do that. And I don't really care about fetching them in this in this backend or in the VM. Just want to skip, just want to skip a block of instructions. Um, so our instruction manager already has a way to do that called fetch block and uh, it just iterates, it just increments the instruction pointer um, until it gets to an end. And so back over here, uh, it's going to just increment the instruction pointer until it gets down to here. And then it's going to return this block of instructions. We're gonna throw it away so we don't care, but uh, in this case, it does exactly what we want. We're just going to discard what it returns because we don't care about it. So that's why I called it skip block of instructions. Uh, and then define method instruction. I'm gonna go back over here. We want to VM skip block of instructions. Uh, expected label is define method. Seems right. So let's uh, let's try it. Give it a try. Uninitialized constant end instruction. Okay, did something wrong here. I think that's compiler to end instruction. Out of stack vm pop pop instruction eighteen vm twenty four. Where's twenty four? I'm here. So let's. Uh, Fascinating. Fascinating. It's the only pop that we had. Oh, we have one here. Oh, um, I think, yes. So the define method instruction is supposed to push the name of the method onto the stack and then it gets popped off immediately because it's not used. So that means over here, I need to push vm.push uh, name. And define method execute for variable set instruction. So we get to do some more of these. Execute VM and uh, variable set. So we need some variables, don't we? Yes, VM RB. Uh, so in our call stack i guess we just need a place to put some variables very vars and we'll do it as a hash and we'll say vm def vars at call stack dot last vars vars at name is vm.pop so we're going to pop the value off of this off of the vm stack and then store it in a variable uh, is that right seems right yeah maybe 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 variable get instruction so let's just copy this variable get instruction and let's do something similar but instead of that, we're going to do vm.push. And end instruction. What does end instruction need to do? So if we look at our IR again, that means 
And the only end instruction is here. So um, presumably we jumped, uh, we sent this P message, we executed all these instructions and we got to the end and we don't want it to keep going. We don't really want end to do anything other than than halt the the virtual machine um, from running. Yes, yes. Let me explain my thinking. Find method. So right here we're calling run again, and so we're recursively calling run on the VM. So we want this run to halt so that we can get to here. Um, so the end instruction needs to do something very different. It needs to return, um, let's say halt, returns halt. And then we need to do something in the VM to honor that. So we'll say result, I say break if result is halt. So we want to stop this cycle of running the, the instructions. If we hit an end, well, something happened. Um, nine times nine is not 13. What did I do wrong? Fascinating. What if I do three? Do I get nine? No, I always get 13. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, cool. Why am I getting 13? So, if I don't print it, I don't get anything. If I print a one, I get a one. If I print a two, I get a two. But if I print square, I get 13. So something about the define method instruction. Oh, I didn't, I shouldn't have to push any result. Well, let's look at, in VMRB, let's look at the, the stack after every instruction. So let's do puts and then we'll PP the stack. We'll PP it. Okay, so our stack looks something like this. Um, actually, let's push, or let's print the instruction dot class uh, 2s. Something like that. Does that give us a little bit better idea of what's happening? So we define the method square. That pushed the name of the method onto the stack. Then we popped it off because it wasn't used. We push int three, we push arg one, we push self, which is main. So this is what our stack looks like. Push uh, arg fascinating why did you get to there let's print the instruction pointer too let's say ip so <laughs> okay something isn't adding up define method square the instruction pointer after executing this should not be eight, should it? Oh yes, absolutely, it should be eight because that's after it's already run, so it's here. Okay, and that makes sense. That's a pop, which goes to nine, push int, then it goes to 10, push arg count one, push self, goes to 12, send square, Okay, that makes sense. It's just not printing as sort of the order of things. That makes sense. So if I printed um, puts instruction here, 
it would probably help to see what's happening because it is jumping into the method that makes sense so we're do this is the instruction define method square and then we go down to <clears throat> we call sem square which means we jump inside of the, the method we push the first argument the zeroth argument which is a three we set the variable x we get the variable x back out i know that's a little bit silly but that's how it works uh, we push the arg count one we get x again and we send star the result is nine then we get the end method and that means we jump back to instruction eight and then to 13. so from eight to 13 um, I'm not sure about that, and I don't think that that's right either. So the return IP, no, that is right. So this is correct. Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, I probably need a better output here. Um, so where did this 13 come from? Because the nine is on the stack. 13 does not make sense. <laughs> Result of calling square with three is 13. And my code is x times x. So what does it mean? Okay, I know what the problem was. So I didn't realize that the instruction pointer, oops, the instruction pointer was being returned from the method. Ah, okay. Let me try to explain why my brain was so broken. Um, in our instructions, we have different kinds of sends, right? We have send p and send star and send square. There are two kinds here, so let's differentiate between send star and send square. When we send square, we want it to jump into our own method, our user-defined method, run code and then return a result that's the important part just like send star returns a result and what i was thinking was that well this method pushes the result onto the stack why isn't it using that because it can't because we need both kinds of sends to work we need the ruby send star to work and we need the send square of user code to work so in addition to setting the IP to 13, which is what our result was, we need to pop, we need to return the, res the result that's on the stack from this method. We need to return what's on the stack. Oh, that was, that was bad. That was, that kind of broke my brain. So let's get rid of this. So the square of four is 16 and I just need to get rid of that and I think I think that's it I think it's working that's that's fantastic oh it's so cool ah uh, I hate I hate those little bugs Oh, I hate little bugs like that where you think something works one way, but it works an entirely different way. <laughs> uh, it does seem a little silly to have to pop the result off the stack, but I this is the only way I can think of to make our own user-defined code work the same as the host language, the host Ruby. Um, I think this is fine. I think this is fine. The alternative send instruction is 
I was thinking, is there an alternative? No? Because we already pushed the result here. I mean, we keep, could, could keep track of what is a user-defined method and what isn't, and then do like a, if user defined, then do this, else just do nothing, right? Um, and then we would take this off, but I think that's just more confusing. So I think I like it this way now that I now that I know it works like that, and uh, I have that loaded in my brain. Um, result must be returned to send instruction. Just leave a note for myself. Um, still works. It's beautiful. It works great. Um, just for old time's sake, we'll puts 13. Puts works. Um, strings don't work. Transform stir. That's because I haven't implemented strings in the new compiler. So uh, that would be a good next step is to work on strings. And I, I feel, feel okay about this. We can't yet do... Um, Fibonacci because we don't have the uh, we don't have const find but we also don't have um, if we don't have if either so we would need to implement the interpreter VM for if instructions uh, which is going to be fun because it needs to skip this block of instructions and then also skip another block of instructions well I guess it could just skip all the way down to end Anyway, and then it also needs to do constants, um, but you're not, not going to be too hard. I think I'll leave that for uh, another time. Uh, it doesn't need to be in this video, but you kind of saw how you kind of saw how we were able to in, to interpret these instructions by jumping around, keeping track of our instruction pointer, uh, and then you know, and jumping around, and then keeping track of our own call stack. And so I think those are the key takeaways here. Uh, is this stack for our stack VM and then the call stack and keeping track of in each call stack frame, the return IP address, the arguments and the variables. And so I don't know, time will tell if that's a good architecture or not, but I'm already super excited uh, and encouraged by how easy that was with our new compiler. Uh, and I want to keep working on it. So I hope that you will join us on Discord or join us on the GitHubs, uh, help, help out with these various things. And uh, uh, if not, I hope you have a side project you're working on, something that you find interesting and fun and challenging and occasionally will break your brain <laughs> like you saw mine uh, broken. But uh, it feels it's humbling, right? It's humbling and it makes you realize like, I, I always have a lot to learn. Always be learning. So uh, I guess with that, I'll sign off and I'll see you next time. Bye.